The program originally scheduled for this time will not be seen, so that we can bring you the following special presentation. What's that? You ask me. <laughs> Could I tell you something about Hartford? Well, I think I should be able to. I was I was born in Hartford. Hartford is where I learned of life's adventure. Now, I've, I've tried to picture it to you. It's going to be very spotty, darting here and there. It's a life and a place that really lives in my imagination as much as it lives in reality because Hartford has changed a great deal. But anyway, bear with me. It'll be spotty, but I hope it'll be interesting. I lived at 133 Hawthorne Street. The house has gone on it. It was a charming American Gothic house with black lace trimming, three peaks, and a quite large piece of property right next to the Arrow Electric factory. But it had a gulch and a woodland separating it from the factory on the one side. And on the other side, some people that we knew very well, the Toscan Bennetts. And Mrs. Bennett was a great friend of mother's. And they did all sorts of reform work together. Have you seen Mark Twain's house? The Harriet Beecher Stowe house. What a great job has been done in restoring them. The kitchen. The style of the fireplace. The slate and marbleized mantles. And the windows bathed to the sun. Cozy places to sit, full of ideas for living and for enjoying. And although it's a generation before, it's the same atmosphere, really, that I was brought up in. The dad was a doctor. He and mother were both mixed up in every reform movement of the time. Birth control at the beginning when no one would mention it at all. Woman's suffrage, which was not yet the thing. Uh, all the fight against uh, gonorrhea and syphilis dad was occupied with early social hygiene movements, anything. You know, help the poor, help the blacks, help anyone who needed help and didn't get a square deal. Now a lot more people are interested in that, but in that day, it was rather rare. My mother was Catherine Martha Houghton. She came from Buffalo, from a family of Houghtons who originated in around Boston. And... Uh, her mother and father were both dead by the time she was 14 years old. And she had two younger sisters. And her mother had called her in before she died and said, I want you to get an education so that you will be able to have an independent point of view in life, which she certainly did have. She was a remarkable person with a great understanding of the terrors of people who didn't have money enough to really swing it or who were women that were not protected and uh, my father was a Virginian it was Thomas Norval Hepburn and uh, he went to Johns Hopkins to medical school and uh, became a doctor and was a general surgeon for a while and then became a urologist and Daddy used to, uh, they just were, you know, they n understood uh, all the prides and agonies that people had in life that they were not in a position to do anything about. 
and mother and dad tried to fix it so that they could do something about it. Well, when I was about three, my father had the Pope Manufacturing Company build me a bicycle because they didn't have bicycles, little bicycles in those days. So uh, then the question, the bicycle came and it was fascinating. And of course, I was scared to death of it. Dad took me out to a place called Keeley Park, where there was a hill. And he got me balanced on the bicycle and then gave me a push. And I started down the hill, down the hill, and way in the distance, there was a little old man walking, and he was watching me, and I was watching him. I was glued to the future, and I drove the wherever the old man went. ran into him and he stopped me and uh, then I got fascinated by the bicycle because then I it my terror of it was thrown out and I got to be a pretty good person on a bicycle and in those days they had a trolley car on Farmington Avenue and a certain amount of traffic but not like today where you'd be dead at a block but uh, someone called up Mother and said, uh, Kit, we've just seen Kathy on Farmington Avenue on her bicycle down near Sigourney Street. And Mother said, oh, thank you, thank you very much for telling me, and hung up. And there was nothing, of course, that she could do. I rode all over the city on a bicycle. back lawn was deep and it ran back to the railroad track. Brownie Park was next to the track. Now it's all part of the highway. There was a lovely pond in those days. We had a raft on the pond and the raft was full of rats and the pond was full of rats. Then everyone used to call me Kathy instead of Catherine or Kate. They might as well have called me Tom, like my father and brother. Because I was a tomboy. I could outrun anybody. I could outclimb anybody. We had a tree out there, which is still standing, I believe. A hemlock tree, which I used to climb at the age of about three. And I was a whiz on the tree, and it was quite a tall tree then. And it seems to me it's the same height now, but I'm not sure it was, but I think it must have been, because it was a high tree, and I used to sit in the top of it. And people would call Mother and say, Kathy is sitting in the top of the tree. And Mother said, don't call her, or don't speak to her, because she doesn't realize that it's dangerous, which I thought was a wonderful comment on one's character. She, well, she trusted me, and she knew that if you weren't scared, you weren't so apt to fall. Then, on a tree, an elm tree that was near there, which was quite high, Dad had a swinging ladder that you could climb up, and he had a, a trapeze, that was on pulleys and a rope that ran the entire length of the property. And underneath it, 
mother said was a, I, I remember this as a matter of fact, was a gravel walkway about two feet wide for deliveries to be made to the back door. And I used to hang by my toes, by my knees. Knees are one thing, they're safe, but toes or heels, not safe. And I used to hang way up. Well, it would be like the second story of a house at the beginning when you climbed up the ladder and got onto this trapeze and sailed all the way down to the end. Then we had a rope on it. We could pull it back up and do it again. Here's Fenwick. It's home to me. We've gone to Fenwick the way we, got. we lived in Hartford, you know, for a thousand years. And uh, had fun. Fenwick is a little sort of peninsula of land beyond Saybrook. We used to have great track meets and all sorts of things like that, diving contests. So we were all pretty good. You know, anyone who was athletically inclined had a very busy life. on the top floor of that house, quite a big house, uh, had a typewriter and papers in the typewriter. They weren't even wet. It had just sailed off and caught about half a mile away on a stone bridge. My brother had a birthday in the summer and we always had a spider web party for his birthday. Spider web party is where you take a string and you tie, all the strings start off, say, with the, on a stairway with the person's name on the string. And then you wind in and out of chairs, upstairs, downstairs, under the table, with a prize at the end. And all the strings, were, that as the kids were different ages, the strings were different lengths so that they would have a chance to be first. It was a spider's web, finally. And uh, they were very popular. I like pin the tail on the donkey. And uh, 
uh, I thought it would be, uh, I really, since it was being done in my house, I should win the first prize. So mother found me sort of figuring out where the donkey was going to be hung and in which direction, and then figuring how the rugs worked so that I could more or less know what direction I was going in because I could practice it. And she said, I don't know why you're doing that. You can't win prizes at your own birthday. <laughs> and I thought, what a terrible thing. Why have the birthday if you can't win the prize? Seems pretty stupid. And uh, we did a play, um, Beauty and the Beast, and I was the beast. And uh, we made quite a lot of money on that play to buy a, a gramophone for the Indians, Navajo Indians in New Mexico, because a man named Bishop Howden had preached about these Indians in the church, and I used to go to church. And uh, it was a charming little church, and I was very impressed with about his stories about the Indians. So we gave this play. Ali Bob, my pal, played Beauty and I played the Beast. My brother Dick did plays. Can remember his doing Bluebeard. I don't think we ever did any others. I used to do plays in a little, in a tiny little theater with wooden figures that I would move around and plays that I would make up. We went to the public schools uh, at first, and then when I was about 12, I guess, or 11, I went to a place called Oxford School, which was a private school, and uh, then uh, I tutored for four years, which was heaven, because I played a lot of golf. I was a very good golfer. And uh, I liked to play every day at the Hartford Golf Club with a teacher named Jack State, who was very good. And I did a lot of work with him. I was good at everything but putting. But I could not. I used to sit in Dad's lap and drive a car. And uh, I drove a car when I tutored all around Hartford. I used to go up Asylum Avenue and turn at Elizabeth Park. And a man, a ditch digger, was working there. And I used to wave to him and he would wave to me. And finally he stopped me one day. And with a charming smile, he presented me with a box of candy. Well, I thought that was great, because I love candy. So off I drove, and I ate half the box of candy. And when I came home, I told Mother Dad, met this man, and he gave me a box of candy. And uh, Dad said, he what? I said, he gave me a box of candy, chocolate candy. And he said, well, you must give it back. I said, well, I can't give it back. I've eaten half of it. Can't possibly, he said, give back what you have not eaten. And you must never take presents from strangers. And I thought, oh, I can't do that. I can't give it back. Half empty box. So I had to change my route. And I never saw the man again. I thought it was so mean. I often wondered what happened to him. There used to be Murphy's Grocery and Butcher Shop, and the building is still standing, I was interested to note. And we used to go in, and Mr. Murphy would either give us or charge uh, cookies. And they used to have cookies that in great big tin boxes with a glass front so you could see the cookies. 
And Mr. Murphy, he let us sample Fig Newton's fly biscuits, a poisonous concoction of chocolate and marshmallow on a vanilla cookie. So fine for the teeth, so fine for the digestion that they stopped making them. Christmas was the same in almost every house. You know, great big Christmas trees and endless presents underneath. And it was the whole family came around, marched down, opened their packages. It was all very exciting. <laughs> father was a very good athlete and he used to come home every day at about five o'clock, have a cup of tea, and then come out and play either baseball or prisoner's base with us. And uh, I can remember once it was my birthday, I hated baseball. I thought it was really a mediocre game. Prisoner's base, I was a whiz at. And uh, so I thought my birthday they'll take my vote and they'll do it and dad took the vote and they voted for baseball and I said but it's my birthday and I voted for business base and he said but you have the privilege of doing what they want to do what the majority wants to do I thought that was poor reasoning but I had to play it was a, a, not an athlete. She did learn to, 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 to skate uh, because she liked to dance on skates and she was fair, but she was not a trained athlete. She was trained in the head. We used to go to a place called Elizabeth Park and we used to go, uh, finally, they used to flood three tennis courts at the golf club, and that was wonderful skating. Mother had two children, my brother Tom, who died early, and me, and she was thinking, well, I have a fine education, but what am I doing with it? And uh, Daddy felt this sort of wonder. And Pankhurst was coming to Hartford to speak. And um, so he said, let's go and listen to her. So they did, and they really got going. Emma Goldman, Mrs. Pankhurst, uh, Margaret Sanger, all the women who were involved, Alice Paul, you know, people who were interested in suffrage or birth control or you know, how to make the world a better place to live in. Oh, it was fascinating having those people visit. And uh, uh, Mother used to have tea every day, and that was a great time of talk and, and interest. And very interesting pe people of those, of that period, would come and sit, and we as kids would go in and sit and listen. So we all wound up sort of with the same general slant. 
Mother and Dad never argued about money or things, only about politics. They were much more advanced than I was, so that I would, if I didn't agree with them, I was being conventional. <laughs> they were being criticized. <laughs> My mother's and father's influence was quite remarkable. In fact, I'm totally the product of two fascinating individuals who happened to be my parents. They gave me the values, the sense of self for it, the drive that I needed. I've had a pretty remarkable life myself, but compared to my mother and father, I'm dull. is where I learned the importance of, of trying, of being sure that I did the best I could. There are no excuses for saying that you can't do things for not trying. Even today, the roots of Hartford are with me as I swing my tennis racket, even if I do catch the ball on the second or third bounce. They're with me when I dig into that flower bed and I think, come on, Cap, you can actually dig it. You can actually do it. It's how hard you try the pursuit. We're surrounded by opportunities, all of us. The pursuit of perfection. We may not get there, but we can try. That is vitality. That's the pursuit of life itself, isn't it? And of course, I have traveled the world from Hartford in pursuit of vitality and of fulfilling work. But when I look around me, I know what I really need is right here in my hometown. You can go to California. You have to, to make movies. But you can't find spring there. Not anything like the spring in Hartford. Yes, Hartford is where I learned to grow up. And it's where I will come home.